Okay, well those of you who've been watching us for a little while, you'll know that we were getting some quails. And this is the quails, they arrived in the post. Uh, on the top here where the knife was, was where the address label is, I've actually just taken that off. We ordered them off of eBay, so this will be a good test to see if ordering off of eBay is any good. We went through about five different sellers on eBay. We looked at them and we said no, no, no. Because you just looked at the feedback and if there was recent really, really bad feedback um, from a few people, then we didn't want to get involved. This one looked to be okay. So we ordered 24 eggs. I think it cost us 14 pounds or something. No, it wasn't 14 pounds. It was 12 pounds including the postage. Now they posted them by the second class, which I'm not too happy with. I would have thought they would have posted something like this, especially at this time of year, because I'm making this in January. I would have thought they would have posted it by first class. Anyway, let's have a look and see. So, the outside is the polystyrene. Let me slice it open. There we go. All right, just excuse me a second, just sort the dog out. Okay, sorry about that, that was just the wife walking out and the dog decided to start barking. Anyway, so we can see now we have got 24 quail eggs. They're meant to be Cortunix quail. So I think, not having a lot of experience with this, because um, this is actually the first time I have ever ordered eggs to come through the post, I think they're actually packaged up quite well. So they seem to be okay, let's have a look. Two, four, six, eight. So the first eight are okay. That one looks a bit larger, a little bit of a bulge to the side of it. So I'm not sure if that one will actually hatch. And the reason why we're getting quails is because we mentioned it um, to a person who buys the chicken eggs that we might get some quails and they'll be looked after by one of the kids. And they were instantly, yes, we will take as many, as many quail eggs off you as you're able to have. So you can see again, that one there's a little bit of an odd shape. But I can't really grumble at odd shaped ones when all of them are like this. Okay, so they all look pretty cool. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna leave them like that for 24 hours, just on the side, just to rest. And then we will come back and we'll put them in the incubator. And then we'll see in a couple of weeks time um, if we get any little quail chicks. Okay, so we've now skipped forward. We're up to day number 10. And what we're gonna do is we're going to candle these now. And we'll have a look and we'll see if anything is growing in them or if it isn't. If it's empty, we're gonna whip them out. Now I know there were a couple of empty ones in there because I'd done a candle on them the other day. Everywhere I read online, they all turn around and say, you can't actually candle quail eggs. And if you look at any of the YouTube videos, they say, no, you can't, because you can't see anything. Well, we've got our little candling unit here, which is mega, mega, mega bright. And when I was using it the other day, he was able to see various bits and pieces. So I'm gonna cut and I'm gonna flip and I'm gonna change about as we do this because I'm hoping that the camera is actually going to be able to pick up some so you're actually able to see a candled quail egg. So when I open up that I'm going to be very very quick because at the minute it's quite cold around here and it's quite cold in here. 
So if we just lift this up, I'm going to leave it running, not turn it off. You will spot that um, one of the bars is actually a piece of cardboard wrapped in packing tape because I've lost the other bar part to it. Right, I'm going to kill the lights. I'm going to start working on this, and hopefully the candle is going. The camera is going to be able to pick up the candle. <laughs> Okay, so if I zoom you in all the way, you can see that that one there is just empty. There's nothing in that one there at all. Um, I'm going to have to grab. Whereas this one here, you can see there's a bit of a darker patch to it, but it doesn't look as if there's anything else in there. Okay, so now in this one here, there is just no light getting through that one at all. You can see that if I just do that, you can see there where there's that good split between where the line goes across and again this one here you can just make out where the air sac is down at the bottom but that is about it for that one That one there you can see quite clearly where the air sac is and where the rest of the egg is. Again you can see a little, a little dark speck. Um, I can see it's just there, it's just in between the two dark bits of the shell. But I must admit, when you compare these to ducks or chickens, I think that might be a crack in the shell on that one. Or any other larger bird, you see in bugger all compared to what you see on them. Let's see if I can get that to stand up right. There you go, I think that might be some veining on that one. I don't think that's a shell crack, I think that might be the actual veining. Okay, so we now move forward on to day number 16. And you can see I've moved the eggs out of one incubator into this other incubator. This is actually a manual turning incubator. So it's ideal just to put everything into when it's going into lockdown. It is a Janol 10 and they're not the greatest of incubators. You will read lots of stories online about the people who have owned them in the past and they've had issues with the temperature, which is why we've got the thermometer in there and we, we have to check that a few times a day just to make sure that it is actually holding the, the right and proper temperature. So anyway, as I said, the eggs have been moved into here. They were moved into here yesterday on day um, number 15. And they will stay in here now until um, we've got quite a few that are hatching. So nothing is really going on at the minute. There are a couple that have got signs that there might be something happening. If I can get the camera into the right place. Um, try not to block my light too much if, if I can get it to zoom in just there, you can see on that one there there's a little pip in it just that little slightly lighter patch that's a little pip in that one as I say this is only day number 15 and there is I can't 
quite see it on that one there there's a little pip um, just there where there's like a right angle in the lines that is actually a little pip but you can't quite make it out so yeah we got uh, we got plenty going on as and when they start to hatch or when they are hatching I'll do a little bit more and then we'll end the video with um, how many actually hatch and is it worthwhile actually buying any on eBay oh I forgot to say we started off with 24 when we moved them over to this one we put them through the candler and we removed five because they were totally empty so we're down to 19 Okay, so we are at hatching day plus one. Yesterday was day 18, the day they were due. And we've got three which hatched out yesterday and the day before. There was one that was a little bit early, and then there was two which came out on day 18. They have been moved over to the brooder. And we just left everything else. We thought we'll give it a go because we could hear some chirping in the eggs, but there wasn't a lot going on. And I'm recording this now, it's half past eight at night, at about half past three they started going and you can see now we've got three in there that are running around and we've got two which are pipped and are very very close to also coming out and there's a couple of others that look like they might just be starting to pip. So I reckon we're about a day behind on what we really ought to be but um, either way the eggs are hatching, we're getting baby quails they seem quite happy, quite healthy. I'm going to leave these guys in here overnight tonight and see what else hatches, what else comes out. Um, and then we'll go from there. So uh, the next bit will be the final bit and we'll do the brooder. When they're all in the brooder, all of them have hatched. And you can see exactly how many hatched from our lot we purchased on eBay. And this is the final result. We have eight of them running around in there. They are now two days old and they are smaller than anything I ever thought they would be. I heard they were going to be small but I didn't expect them to be quite as small as what they actually are. So if we look at the numbers, we started off with 24 eggs. We then had 19 that made it through the candling because we had five that were empty and they were just clear all the way through. We then had these eight which have hatched. Um, we had another two which also hatched but they hadn't made it through. Well, they hatched, they came out and within about two hours they were dead. Um, which we have heard happens. So what's that? That's eight, ten, fifteen and then we had nine which have gone in the bin, one of which had pipped but it was just a little tiny pip, 
the others of which I, I don't really want to do the egg autopsy on. I have seen other people do egg autopsies, but it <clears throat> it isn't the sort of thing that I really want to get into. So, um, yeah, let me sort things out and um, we will open them up and we'll grab one out. Okay, so as I said, they've only been in here a couple of days, but they have made an absolute mess of the place, as you would expect from chicks. Let me just grab one up. But they are absolutely tiny. If I put you up, there you go. And that's just one. Let me hold it where the camera can see it. There you go. And that's uh, a couple of days old. They were. The camera there is. They were obviously even smaller at birth. They are very, very jumpy. Ooh. As you can see, he is fine. He's wandered off. Um, let me show you. He's down in the corner. He's wandered off. I'm not holding him up too high. It looks worse because I'm zoomed in. If I zoom out, there we go. So, yeah, you can see they've made a right old mess in there and they will be in there now. Um, I'm expecting them to be in there for about a week or so, if not longer. We have got snow outside, but um, this, I'll just briefly explain in case you haven't seen it before. Put that back on so it calms them down a little bit. This is the brood box that we have, and all it basically has is, on the side is the temperature controller, it's one of the STC 1000s. You can get them on Amazon, eBay, anywhere else like that. And that controls when the light goes on and off. So when the temperature gets low, the light comes on. And when the temperature gets high, the light goes off. But also because we're in uh, end of January, start of February, and it is that cold, we do also underneath of here have an oil filled radiator, which is also on just to give them a little bit extra heat. So, the questions. Can you hatch quail eggs brought on eBay? Yes, you can. Is it worth it? Um, I think it depends on the seller. If you get the right one who's got the right amount of the feedback and the right experience, then yes, you can do it. Is it worth it? For what I paid for them, to have eight chicks running around, yes, it is worth it. Like, yes, I originally brought... 24 eggs and I've ended up with eight. It isn't great numbers. That might be partly down to the way how I incubated them. I'm not going to put that all down to the chicks because obviously I didn't do the egg autopsy or anything else like that. I'm not going to put that all down to the person who actually sent them through the post. Um, am I going to do it again? Well, yep. Um, but I won't be using the small incubator, I'll be doing it in the big incubator and we'll be doing 150 eggs of them, so keep an eye out for that video. So yeah, if you have any questions, any comments, please write them down below. Um, I am open to any comments, this is the first time we've ever kept quail, so please, any comments you have, let me know. And um, yeah, please like, please comment, please subscribe, hit the subscribe button and you can see these guys' journey through to being either egg layers or the meat birds. The main reason why I've got these is because I can buy these off of one person, I can go to the poultry auction and I can pick up either some males or some females, depends on what we need, and then we've got two bloodlines that we can then use to start our own quail colony. So yep, yeah, cheers for watching this video and until the next one, bye bye.